is Stephanie Simmons, and I feel like God has called me to do this video, so I am doing it. Uh, I just wanted to kind of record what's happening in my life right now, because there's amazing things that God is doing, and I know that it's only by His power, and um, I think that He's called me to share that with the world, and so that's what I'm going to do. Um, I'll start with my story with the innovators. It's been an awesome journey. These guys are from Zimbabwe, and um, I got to go to Harare, Zimbabwe, two years ago in August of 2010 with my work. I served as an administrative professional for the United Methodist Church for a body called the Connectional Table. And so there was a meeting going on in Africa for a committee called the Study Committee on the Worldwide Nature of the Church, of the United Methodist Church. And I got to go there to basically take notes for these, this meeting of church leaders in Zimbabwe. And then um, got to go to the Ivory Coast as well for the meeting of the, the full committee. But while I was in Zimbabwe, and, and I know it was God that, that brought me there because it really wasn't supposed to be me in the first place. It was supposed to be another staff member. Um, but then at the last minute, her family decided that they didn't really want her to be traveling. She's got a very small child, and so I ended up getting to be the one to go. And then I met this, this group, this music group called The Innovators at their church. I got to worship at their church called Inner City United Methodist in Harare, Zimbabwe. And that's where I met them. There were six of them at the time in the group. And they shared with me their dream to come and have a music tour in the United States. And so I just said, okay, well, let me see what I can do. And um, truly my hopes were not very high about it. I just thought that, that maybe I would find someone um, through my connections in the United Methodist Church, find someone who had the, the skills and the passion to help them achieve that dream. And I did some research and tried to find some folks who might be interested in doing that, but uh, those people who are, are passionate like that are already very busy, and so no one wanted to take on that project. Um, and, you know, they didn't know these guys. They hadn't met them in person like I had. So they said no, and uh, I just continued to communicate with them. They, they communicated with me over email, and kept sharing their dreams and and they kept practicing and planning and and they shared with me that they had they had decided a date it was going to be June of 2011 for their tour um, and this was I guess December of 2010 when they said that to me and I said okay how's that gonna happen I you know that's really fast so um, I couldn't see how that would happen but in December, when I was driving to Dallas from Corpus Christi, which is a very long drive, I was by myself and was listening to a Joyce Meyer CD, and I heard God call me very loud and clear. He said, Stephanie, this is your project that I've called you to do. No one else is going to do it. It's, it's up to you if you're going to take on this task that I've given you or, or if you're going to ignore it and, and keep going with life as, as it is right now. Either way, you're still my child and I will love you the same. And so I was just filled with these crazy emotions of excitement and fear. and <laughs> But, of course, I said yes. I was like, wow, this is awesome. you know. And uh, immediately got on the phone with a friend of mine who is a pastor in the United Methodist Church and said, what in the world do I do? Where do I start? And she said, she said Stephanie, you can do this. God will give you what you need. And so I just immediately started contacting other pastors and getting performances arranged. And it, the timing was just perfect because June of, of 2011, June is the month where the annual conferences of the United Methodist Church meet. And so we ended up scheduling some performances at those conferences, which are very large, um, several hundred people at those conferences. So you know, got a lot of exposure there, and it was just incredible the way things came together, um, and 
I know that it wasn't my doing. It was God. It was just simply God. God just used me as a tool to pull it all together. And it, it was it was nuts <laughs> because um, there were, like I said, there were six of them in the group, six young men from Zimbabwe. They were in their 20s, and we ended up borrowing a van from my church, the First United Methodist Church in Alice, Texas, a 15-passenger van, and drove it all the way across Texas to, to do this tour. I took two weeks of vacation from my job. My whole family actually went. My daughter was three at the time. I was pregnant with my son. I was five months pregnant, and my husband went with me. Um, so we had the whole family in tow. My husband and my daughter were in his truck. They drove separate from the van. I drove the van. I was, I was the only one who can because my husband is, is disabled and unable to drive a vehicle that's not modified for him. Um, so yeah, it was just insane. When I, when I really think about it and when I tell people about it, they just say, what were you thinking? You know, you, you, how did you do all that? And the only thing I can say is it wasn't me. <laughs> God gave me what I needed. Um, I couldn't have done it without him, and I know that he's he's just he's the one that called me to do it, and he's the one that gave me the strength to carry through. And the tour was so amazing! Oh my gosh, the the first performance was at Hamilton Prison in Bryan, Texas, which is near College Station, Texas, where I went to school um, at Texas A&M. Whoop, class of '02, and. So yeah, they went to Hamilton Prison. It was my first time to have gone into a prison environment and to watch the hope that was that was seen by the prisoners uh, that they experienced when they when they listened to these guys sing about Christ and and to tell their stories about what Christ is doing in their lives and and these guys, you know, were all dressed in their their white inmate uniforms and standing up and praising God together and it was amazing and they introduced themselves to us afterwards and thanked us for it and that was just the beginning of, of an amazing tour two weeks long and there was a total of 19 performances um, many of which were in churches some were in homeless shelters of course there was the prison uh, thousands of lives were touched just on that one tour for two weeks and that was just the beginning of what now has become an even bigger ministry of the innovators. They went back home after that tour was over, back home to Zimbabwe, and um, were like celebrities because they had gotten to come to the United States. And they were there for a couple of months, and then they decided to come back in October of 2011. And they came on their own will this time because my son was due and I couldn't help. But uh, they came and they stayed with a pastor who's from Zimbabwe and lives in the Dallas area. Stayed with him for a couple of months, I guess. And um, just kept kept moving forward in faith and, and singing where possible, you know. Um, and then I guess it was about January, I felt like I was back to being able to a point where I could start arranging performances for them again so they came down to Corpus Christi and, and stayed with me where I live and I arranged some performances for them and, and started doing some other tours. Oh and then really cool thing was that when they were on their tour in June of 2011 they told me they said that they were going to perform at the General Conference of the United Methodist Church which is the decision-making body of the United Methodist Church. It's a thousand delegates, meets every four years. It's a, a huge, very important part of the way the United Methodist denomination works. And so when they said that to me, I was like, wow, that's a, that's a big dream. Um, we'll, do, we'll do what we can, you know. We'll, we'll apply for it and see what happens, see what God does. So um, submitted the application, and lo and behold, they were approved, and, and they became one of the worship leaders at General Conference. <laughs> and that happened this last April, April of 2012, and that was in Tampa, Florida. We, uh, they estimate there were about 2,000 people at that conference. And it was, it was awesome, really, really awesome, especially since they 
declared that dream, that was such a witness to me, that they had declared that dream, that specific dream, and then they began preparing for it, and then it came to pass. More later. God bless you. Bye-bye.